it's a transfer of perspective experience and knowledge that you do get uh, from mentoring in terms of high level design originalization privacy so accessibility so all those things which are very small but very important in a product development those things are highlighted and uh, then they do get benefit of it once they are interested and inspired then i think they are able to kind of pull off uh, like beautiful products that i have seen Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Humans of Pesto. I'm Laisha, head of developer relations at Pesto. Today we have with us a very special guest, our super mentor joining us. He has been with Pesto for some time and has helped a lot of developers in shaping their journey so far. Today we have with us Somiraj. Thank you Somiraj for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. It has been a pleasure. Okay. So to kick things off, uh, why don't you start uh, with telling us a little bit about your journey? Of, you know how you started in tech, and what brought you here at Pesto? Yeah, sure. So I did my computer science uh, back in two thousand fourteen, and uh, then I started with a service based company. I started with a back end development, and then later on I moved into a UI role. After that, I moved to a product uh, company. So I did my stint at VMware when it was more of virtualization, network virtualization, few things around AI, and then uh, I currently I'm working at Cisco. So you know, in your journey throughout the tech, how did you find yourself on the road of mentorship? It was somewhere around 2019, uh, wherein due to COVID, like we were working from home, and at that time, actually, I started mentoring at my company, and actually, it felt very good. It felt very good, you know, giving back to community, and it it was like very inspiring to see the projects that the mentees were developing. So over the period of time, I think I developed that interest, you know, to share my experiences, my perspective, and to get to see the wonderful projects that they do build. So that's how I got started. in your uh, opinion you know what is uh, that mentorship um, or in what ways does mentorship help developers specifically but when it comes to mentoring it's like you are getting the perspective uh, you know of someone who has that, that particular experience I, i think the accidents that they did what went wrong with them and then what we should avoid so it's like rather than me trying to make those mistakes trying to learn from other mistakes and getting a perspective okay that this is at a very high level uh, this is the way of software development and that, so that's how i think the mentorship is very important like it's a transfer of perspective experience and knowledge that you do get uh, from mentoring so i think that's very important part apart from the knowledge so when you're working with these developers right what is that one thing uh, that helps these developers you know understand their path because um, understanding where they want to go and which paths they want to follow is something uh, that most developers don't understand early on in their careers so how do you kind of uh, help them understand their own uh, skills and then their expertise as well so i think the most important thing is uh, where they do get stuck is kind of to kind of see a very wider vision of a product development they're able to kind of pull things off very quickly do a kind of poc and maybe be even end to end development in that case wherein they are kind of just be able to let's say do a clone of a music streaming app but when it comes to like let's say for an example music streaming app what ha- uh, what happens is there are very nitty gritty details and technical details of it so uh, here i think we have made such a projects that you know it's it's not just end to end about developing a clone of a music application it's all about chunking it's all also about chunking changing the resolution skipping to a particular part and then trying to see how optimized product it is so i think that is something which i was able to help them be- because of my experience and then even if you will take a real world application there are a lot of things like sharding a database uh, replicating it to different different locations so that is something which might not be very easily be available to them but i mean as a mentor maybe i can give a perspective of them to look at the product at that particular you know end product in a realistic way so those things like in terms of high level design originalization privacy so accessibility so all those things which are very small but very important in a product development those things are highlighted 
and uh, then they do get benefit of it and that kind of brings me to my next question i'm always curious you know uh, developers always have these two minds one is they always want to uh, get good at dsa get a good placement and then the other is when they get good at development and build something which real people use so when you work with these developers right uh, how do you kind of foster that spirit in them to you know build something or explore their hands at open source projects or try their uh, hands at a new skill probably right so i think uh, i think for uh, this is something that i think pesto provides not only me because uh, the curriculum that pesto has is kind of uh, based on the product thinking it has always been product thinking and that is how it is different from uh, you know other maybe edtechs or uh, companies out there so uh, at pesto i think uh, this particular thing wherein you get to build the product mindset that is very important and uh, that has helped uh, you know the mentees to kind of think in that way in terms of in terms of thinking of product in order to optimize them to scale them so those things are part of the curriculum itself so they do have that particular sense you know of development from the start itself wherein they are making an hld they do, right. they know what how their design will look like how the deployments would look like they actually make some wireframes they think about accessibility so all those things are actually i think uh, there in their mindset once they start with the program and then it's all about kind of knowing that interest and then uh, uh, once they are interested and inspired then i think they are able to kind of pull off uh, like beautiful products that i have seen everybody has different requirements for some hld is very obvious for some hld would be a very new concept so um, you know how do we, how do you make sure or how do you uh, cater to the individual needs of your mentees and work with them to kind of give them the best uh, possible Uh, time so i think that is uh, the thing about the mentorship model wherein the relationship between a mentor and a mentee is such that first of all mentor do understand their mentee that uh, what is the education level and what what is the prerequisite that this uh, mentee has and after that only you know uh, the mentoring is structured in such a way that their weak points uh, maybe their interest areas are kind of highlighted more and if you you know you get to know your mentee that let's say he is very good at front end development so then you can focus on more things like optimizations and you know scaling uh, and maybe fostering interest on how you can actually uh, implement uh, dsa to your front end applications so what's your take on side projects um, do you think uh that's something that helps them in their journey because obviously it's an unconventional thing for developers to go for yeah i think i think that is the most important thing because building a project you know together with your mentor through this 2 3 months or more it's like you are kind of incrementally building something and then you get an end product right and the thing about this uh, whole mentor mentee relationship is that you you are into a particular feedback loop it's not like discontinued you know your mentee from start and then you kind of build on to their skills and you know their expertise so i think uh, side projects as you rightly talked about like the, it, they are the most important thing because that is something which they learn here and implement on their own which i mean boost their confidence also they get to know a lot of things which i am sure that they were not aware about and they won't be able to get it from elsewhere because it's now very personalized to your product you have thought onto something it's your idea and now you know your mentor can only guide you how to kind of make it at as a end product in an optimized way ready to launch in a market so so i think side product is one of the most important things i think for this program i think it's fascinating to reflect on your journey of mentorship you know both professionally and personally but what uh, what brings me to my next question is uh, looking around in tech uh, i see a new technology coming up every day whether it's ai whether it's security whether it's privacy you know uh, what is your take on these evolving uh concepts and other new technologies that are coming up two main things are uh, ai ml basically now into i think every aspects of the product the metadata that they do collect and the decisions that they uh, that are make so that i think th- that is the most important part uh, you know of ai ml wherein it's now into a lot of things and then you 
can make some decisions from getting a metadata it is everywhere and uh, it's all about harnessing the power of ai that i think most of the companies are now striving to do and it's in competition uh, the other important tech is uh, you know edge computing wherein the companies are trying to bring their devices near to the location of the consumers the other important investments and innovations we do see um, is in privacy because now it's very important part in all the software applications so there's a lot of focus on privacy also and uh, the products also need to adapt to those changes so i think uh, that's a very important thing privacy ai ml and edge computing being some of those areas yeah. as a mentor when you worked with your mentees you know how do you make sure that uh, they are well equipped with latest in tech uh, what to go where to choose from and bunch of those things this ecosystem is itself evolving as uh, there are new innovations new best practices coming the frameworks also do evolve the ecosystem also do evolve so uh, you know a lot of frameworks make their own guidelines there are certain things that are embedded now in frameworks uh, which do kind of take care of all those emerging trends and then there are the best practices definitely that we do take care of so uh, uh, for the mentees if they are making a product uh, how we make sure that they are kind of just they are not overlooking on to anything else is by making sure that all the best practices are followed right so that's one of the things that we do i i think in pesto there are a lot of sunday sessions also that 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 covers this aspects so there has been uh, sessions on let's say privacy um, you know security there has been sessions wherein we go dwell into deeper into those technologies let's say even um, a, a simple thing like sorting filtering how it's implemented in an e-commerce application what is the right ui ux for that so all those things are uh, covered in those extra sessions and it's not only about tech sessions there's a lot a lot of soft skill sessions also like right. th there are sessions on the art of presenting the idea itself so i i i think those are very helpful in order to you know mentees to get uh, in touch with this latest trends and innovation that are in the market so when you've uh, seen a lot of projects go from wireframe to actual live products um could you tell us a little bit more about what actually makes a good product yeah so uh, uh, that's a very good question so uh, even if a product let's say it's not a kind of full fledged e-commerce application or some kind of a, a maybe a video streaming application but it's a simple utility tool which can be very useful and you know people can consume it easily that can be a good actually viable product and if that is something that you are building end to end a utility simple utility function right so i think uh, uh, even having this kind of utility products could be a very important side projects that you can work right, on right yeah. absolutely i think uh, a mentor plays a lot of role uh, in shaping really? the actual product that is coming out right they play a role of i think a, a maybe a tutor they play a role of a scrum master when they are into a, a you know project phase <laughs> wherein they kind of have to see the progress okay what they are lagging maybe why not rescope the project uh i think the other important part is the non functional requirements of the project not just the functional requirement of the project so how the project will perform with respect to let's say scale what about uh, browser support what about accessibility page load all of those things i think are discussed holistically at that point in time right while we are discussing this it also reminds me there are a lot of misconceptions around what a mentor is and uh, you know what will they help you in so uh, how do you think uh, you can help us debunk those myths that are generally associated with mentorship yeah so uh, one of the myths is like uh, mentor is all about like uh, maybe resolving queries but uh, if you would ask any of the mentees maybe uh, who has success successfully completed the product so it's all about i think uh, less about a tutor role and i think it's more about a guide role because mentor won't spoon feed you anything because that is readily available uh, you know to you but it's more of a guide you, it, they will just pinpoint few things and then you have a whole arena to kind of explore out so that is kind of the main role a mentor plays it's it's all about a guide 
so maybe when you are implementing your mentor could uh, show you that particular perspective that what about you know parallel users what about those scenarios what about edge cases which you haven't really thought on so those uh, accidents you you kind of just happen to know all the mistakes that maybe your mentor did or some innovation or some inspiring stories that your mentor can bring on right so it's all about knowing their experience and getting the value of those experience and perspectives so i think that's the important part now to add some fun to our podcast uh, how about a quick f- uh, rapid fire round are you up for it okay <laughs> okay let's go with the first one um, what's that one technology that you're most excited about and probably that has not fully realized itself yet computer vision if you were a superhero with a tech superpower what would that be javascript <laughs> <laughs> okay um you have javascript the good parts javascript the bad parts so you need a hero for <laughs> javascript absolutely okay would you rather have the ability to instantly master a new programming language or learn any human language programming language yes human <laughs> language quite difficult <laughs> ios or android android tabs or spaces tabs java or python java debugging or refactoring debugging front end or back end front end pair programming or solo coding pair programming remote work or office environment remote always for life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay hackathons or coding competitions hackathons great the product building spirit okay you, you did great and that was really fun and to our listeners thank you for joining us for another exciting episode we'll be back with more such exciting conversations until then keep learning and exploring and never stop innovating